Good evening. I'm Rex Loy with New Song Church. Welcome to our Worship at Home. During these next four weeks, the church is celebrating the season of Advent. This is four weeks that helps us prepare ourselves for that journey into the Bethlehem stable. It's a time when I'm asking all of us to make space in our lives, to make space for the hope of Christmas, to make space for the joy and the peace and the love that comes from that baby that's born in the Bethlehem stable. And in hopes that on Christmas Eve, when the light of the world comes into our lives, there will be space for us to receive the light of the world. Now, the three ways I think that you can um, maybe feel more a part of this, even though we are in our different uh, locations. The first is uh, I'll be lighting an Advent wreath here in the chapel. And each week, if you have an Advent wreath, you may want to set that up so that you can light a candle or two or three at the same time that I light the candles here. You might also um, want to prepare yourselves to be ready for um, saying the Lord's Prayer after the pastoral prayer. I'll recite it and you can, you can say it along with me there in your homes. And the third way that you can prepare yourselves to worship even more fully in this experience is to set out for yourself some bread and some wine so that at the conclusion of the service, we might break bread together as we remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to pause the video, set some things up for you so that you'll be better prepared. For it is the light of the world that is coming to live with us. Go ahead and pause the video and then come right back. We continue our celebration of Advent with the lighting of our Advent wreath. The evergreen reminds us of the ever-present, everlasting love of God. The candlelight reminds us of the eternal presence of God in our lives. This week we have the candle of hope, and now this week we have also the candle of peace. May we make space in our lives for the nearness of God, for the healing and reconciliation that only God's peace can bring. The world waits for a miracle The heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel A child prays for peace on earth And she's calling Let us be in a spirit of prayer. 
Lord God, we have allowed dark times to take up residence in our lives. We desperately need your light. We have allowed winter to settle into our souls, and we desperately need your warmth. Help us, O oh God, to make space in our lives for peace. We find ourselves judging those we do not understand. We start thinking disagreement is synonymous with hatred. Help us to make space in our lives for peace. We are grateful that Christmas is still a few weeks off. It gives us time to clear a space for your light to pierce our darkness as we make space in our lives for peace. As we gather for this time of worship, fill us, O oh God, with your promised peace, which passes all understanding. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The writer of Luke's Gospel says that when the angels appeared, they said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace with those to whom God is pleased. You know, we have so many pictures of Jesus that are not pictures of Jesus at all. But if you go to any religious bookstore and you, you, you see the wide range of pictures that you can buy to, to place on your walls or, or you, you, you leaf through any of the, uh, the Bibles and there'll be, there'll be drawings or pictures of Jesus. And, and it, I suppose they're misleading at best. So many pictures of Jesus. Pictures of him as an adult, white, Anglo-Saxon, clean sandals. Long, wavy brown hair. But he probably didn't look like that. We have pictures of the, the Last Supper. Where Jesus and his disciples are all seated on one side of the table. And the tablecloth is, is starched and creased. And it was probably not like that. Probably no picture of Jesus is more misleading than the pictures we have of his birth in a stable. You have Mary in almost a royal blue robe, her hands up in adoration, Joseph standing there serene, peaceful. It was not like that. He would have been crying, Jesus would have been crying, vomiting, and fussy. Mary would not have had a clue what to do with him. She would have been handing him off to Joseph and Joseph back to her. And then there were shepherds the, the, who were the outcasts of society in those days coming to visit and they would have stunk like sheep. And the carols that we've learned haven't haven't significantly helped us to sense what it must really have been like. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. They didn't even have pampers. It would not have been such a sweet setting. The original, the original setting for Christmas was not a picture of peace and serenity. It was more like a picture of today where we have a pandemic, where we have social unrest, and where we have a turbulent government in transition. Which is exactly why I believe that we need to make space in our lives for peace. We need to silence the newscasts 
so that we can hear God's whisper. We need to slow down our frantic pace so that we can hear God be still and know. And we need to place our fears on a back burner. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I remember years ago there was a, <clears throat> a contest where uh, a magazine <clears throat> wanted to find the best picture they could that represented peace. And they received all kinds of uh, submissions where uh, very pastoral scenes where, where maybe, uh, maybe sheep were, were grazing in a, in a pasture or, 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 or mountains covered with snow. Or, the, or there were pictures of the, of the seasides where the wind was gentle and the waves were nice. But the, the prize... Was, was one that was a picture taken of a mother robin sitting on her nest while all about her was in a violent storm. The trees were shaking. The wind was pouring down. And the little robin mother just sat serenely on her nest guarding her baby. And that won the prize for peace. I remember reading a story years ago about a young child who had been orphaned during World War II. He was living in an orphanage that was filled completely with children whose parents had both been killed in the bombings. And he told about that one Christmas morning when he was tumbling out of bed and he knew it was Christmas morning, but there, was no, there were no smells coming from the kitchen ovens. There were no gifts at the foot of the bed. There was no Christmas tree in the corner. It was just another day, Christmas morning with little to eat and nothing to celebrate. Only other children who were frightened. But he told there came a knock at the door that morning and four young U.S. military men who had just gotten off sentry duty and who happened to be passing by thought that just on a whim they would just knock on the door and come in and see what kind of festivities the kids had going on. And when the four young soldiers realized that there were absolutely no festivities, these four young men did the only thing they knew how. They simply walked among the other children and, and wished them Merry Christmas, and they began handing out whatever they had. So maybe it was a stick of gum to one child, maybe a nickel or a dime to another, maybe a little trinket to this one or that one. Whatever they had, they were taking out of their pockets and giving it to the children. And this little guy said that he was sitting on the edge of his bed back in the corner. And one of the young servicemen approached him and he asked the little fella, what would you like for Christmas? And this little newly orphaned boy with tears in his eyes said to the American soldier whom he did not know, I need to be held. And he said that this American soldier, cold and dirty, picked him up, held him in his arms, and then sat back down on the bed and sat with him and sang a few Christmas carols. The first thing he really knew about our country was that even those who were fighting were willing to pause, to take time and make space for peace and to love a little boy they didn't know. 
this season as we wait for the Christ to be born. Make space for peace. Make space for the peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. When we talk about the peace that comes from God, we talk about a peace that passes all understanding. It's a peace that we cannot fully humanly understand. About all we can really understand about this peace that comes from God is that we can make space for that peace. And there is no greater place, no, no place better equipped to make space for the peace of God than with the bread and the cup. It's my prayer that we might all make space for God's peace this evening. Remember with me, if you will, the night in which he was betrayed. Remember how Jesus took the bread and how having blessed and broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of this. May we now make space in our lives for peace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen.